Hey, you're with Chandeep and Goodly once again. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about that how exactly the dashboard was constructed. Not too much into nitty gritties of the coding part of it and everything, um, but just give you a good overview of how the dashboard was made. I hope you've taken a look at video number one, which is the functionality of the dashboard. And we're going to take a look at the nitty gritties in this video. So uh, as of now on my screen, what you can see is Power BI Desktop, which is an additional software, just like Excel, you can install it, you can work on it. Uh, the base version is free. We have the same screens as you saw it on the web version, which is the planner screen, the training screen, the cost screen, and the feedback screen. And the dashboard works just as the same way as it was working on the web version. So if you click on internal, this will filter out it internal and so on and so forth. Now I'm going to take you over to the Excel file, which contains the raw data. We'll take a look at the data. I'll then tell you how I imported the data into Power BI, you know, did a lot of uh, coding and the DAX code and all that kind of stuff. And then we will see that how the dashboard was created. Let's just jump over to the Excel file, which contains the data. So if you just take a look at this Excel file, which is already open, it has a four or five different sheets here and they ha you have series of data here. So this is the training planner. Um, so the first column here is program code. The second column here is name of the program, employee code, employee name, program date, attendance, uh, was it full partial? As of now, we just have two. A trainer, who was the trainer for the program, a training content score, trainer knowledge score, style of delivery score, interactivity score, and the overall score. Um, and if you have, let's say 20 people sitting in one program, so you will have 20 different employee codes here. You will have the name of the employee. Uh, the same date is going to be repeated what 10, 20 times, uh, depending upon the number of people sitting for the program. The program code is going to be repeated. The program name is also going to be repeated, right? And individual score of employee is going to be captured right here. So this is how the training planner looks. Next we have is the calendar table, which is just a list of dates. Then we have the training data table. Now in the training data, we have the unique names of all the programs that you do inside the company. So if you have, let's say 25, 30, 40, 50 different unique programs that you do, we're going to have a list of all those programs right here. That means that one program is going to have one row of this table. So take a look, high impact presentation. That's the name of the program. The program has been coded or the unique code of this program is HIP2. Two stands for the row number. HIP stands for high impact presentation that creates the unique code for it. Then we have the number of days. Was it a one day or a two day workshop? How many days, how many hours in a day do you cover? How's the billing for this program? Is it a lump sum billing? That means uh, does the trainer charge for a per day uh, or is it a per participant billing? Does the trainer charge by participant basis? What is the rate either by per day or by per participant per day? And uh, what is the training mode? Is it an external training or an internal training? And who's the organization doing it? Uh, if you know, the organization is doing it internally, you will have company company and you can just write the name of your own company here. If you have an external vendor doing it, you will just write the vendor name right here. So all the unique programs are going to be managed here. Then we have the employee data dump. This is nothing but the list of all the people who work inside the company and all their details. So uh, employee code, name, department, location, band, date of birth and date of joining, gender, CTC and the range of the salary. And we have like maybe 1000 or people working in the company. Uh, maybe more, maybe less uh, in your case, but as of now we have 964 people uh, working inside the company, minus one headers. Last table is the, tra is the, is the targets table. That means that uh, general manager across all the businesses will have a target to complete 12 training hours in the entire year. Vice president people have the target of completing eight training hours per year, manager, department manager, officer, and so on and so forth. So this is the training target. Now, um, in all of these data sets, if you have more data coming in, you don't need, need not worry. You can just dump the data underneath the table. So as of now, we just have about 205 rows. If you have more data or more trainings planned uh, after June, you can just dump the data here and the table is the dashboard will automatically update. Now from here, I am then taking all of this data into Power BI desktop, which is where I have created the dashboard. Now, as of now, even before I show you the workings of the Power BI desktop, I want to tell you that as of now, my data is in different Excel sheets. Your data could be in different Excel files as well. It could be different CSV documents as well. It could be text files as well. Power BI has the capability to accept any kind of, not any, but more or less every kind of data 
source that you may have or the most common data sources that you may have. It can be different Excel files, can be the same Excel file. All right, from here we move on to Power BI Desktop and you can just take a look that in the relationship view, this is, there are three views here. In one of the views, I have all the tables that I just spoke about. We have the planner table, which is a training planner. We have the training data table, unique list of all the programs, calendar, the targets, and the employee dump. And all of these are linked to one another. Instead of writing a bunch of VLOOKUPs, what I've done is I've set up some relationships here. Just take a look here. The program initial here, which is the unique code of the program, is linked to the program code. And if I take a look at the linkage between the two table, you can see that they are two linked by the program initials. Similarly here, they are linked by the dates. Similarly here, they are linked by the employee code. And here they are linked by the band of the employee because the targets are band wise. So once I, set, I get the data into Power BI Desktop, I set up relationships and then I start writing the codes. Because as of now, I don't know the man hours. As of now, I don't know the unique number of people. So you can just take a look at the, the, the things here, the fields here, which is the formulas that or the codes that I've written. Wherever you see a calculator sign, that's the code that I've written and the code will calculate what you need trained, total trained, total man hours, number of programs, program days, and you can create as many codes as, as you would like. And this will dynamically then calculate whatever metric that you're trying to calculate. Let's just take a look at another view of the data. So you have all the tables right here, the calendar table, the employee data table, the planner table, and so on and so forth. Now in the planner table, just take a look, wherever you have a calculator sign, those are the codes that I've written. These are DAX codes. Um, take a look at the full attendance code. So you can just take a look at the code here, uh, locations covered code here, uh, program dates. This is the calculated column, program number of days. You'll see some code on the top. Uh, you'll see some code on the top and so on and so forth. So these are different codes that I've written and these codes or these formulas are going to enable me to do calculations and visualizations dynamically. So once I'm done with all the data modeling, that means importing the data and then writing the DAX codes or the DAX formulas on top of that, then I'm all set to visualize that data into Power BI. Then I move on to the third screen, which allows me to create sheets like these and I can set it up. As of now, you can see four sheets. Maybe I can have another one. So you can just take a look. You have another sheet here. You have the fields here. So maybe, maybe from the planner, I can take a look at number of programs. So you have number of programs here and maybe I want to look at by different uh, departments. And you can see that I now have a chart by different number of programs according to different departments, right? So you can create more charts like these and uh, you can set it up like a dashboard and the dashboard, uh, I mean, you can kind of fancy it up just like this and the dashboard will then give you a synchronized look and you can also name the sheet here. So let me just kind of delete that sheet uh, because we just created a dummy here. All right, now once I complete all the modeling of the dashboard, all the workings of the dashboard, I then publish this dashboard to powerbi.com, right? So I go here, I say publish and I publish to Power BI. This will take the dashboard and all the workings of the dashboard to powerbi.com. From there, I create a shareable link, which you just saw it in the previous video and the shareable link can then access on the desktop or anybody who has a link can access the desk can access the dash dashboard but i would not recommend uh, you creating a link for your dashboard because then anybody who has a link can also see the sensitive information of the company all right so this is since this is a prototype this is just a uh, dummy data so you know it's cool to take a look at the link here but not in the real time databases all right, this was a quick overview about how did I put together the dashboard, how did I take the data, put it into Power BI, and then how did I write the measures and the DAX code to finally create a dashboard like this. Now, obviously, uh, in a limited time frame, I cannot be explaining the entire piece of code and the entire piece of working, but this is a good overview of how the dashboard is constructed. Now, in the last part of the video, which is upcoming, I'm going to talk about that uh, assuming that you have no information or no knowledge about the coding part of it or the working part of the Power BI and stuff like that, how can you still implement the same dashboard with the same metrics for your own organization, right? Stay tuned for that and thanks for watching. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.